Okay, so now we're going to start talking about standard deviation. Um, and b before we do that, though, I did want to point out something that when we were talking about the median, um, where this comes into play, I was talking about how economic data, we are typically, uh, uh, they typically report that as the median so that these larger outliers don't skew the data. And so, for example, if you listen carefully to the news or the radio, when they're talking about family income in the U.S. Uh, and the United States or other countries, you know, Australia, Britain, um, they will talk, or the U.K., they'll talk about um, the median family income. And the reason being is when they collect all this income data, if you were to also include uh, the income of folks like, you know, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and all these other folks who just make exorbitant incomes. Um, if they were to just take that and do the uh, mathematical average, the, uh, the mean would be very skewed. We'd have a very skewed data set and it would make us look like we're really making great money. And so as a result, we want to use the median, the midpoint. Uh, and that gives us a much better uh, feel for where people are in the world in terms of income. So just to give you kind of an example of that. And so then what happens now, we've got, we're assuming we've got this normal curve with our grit scale data. And again, the grit scale is a measure of somebody's persistence towards a goal. And we're assuming we've got a normal curve and we know that the scale goes from one to five, five being higher, grittier, uh, one being less gritty, less persistent. What's helpful, we know that we've got, it's helpful to know that centralmost figure. And then the next thing that's helpful is to the degree to which um, the scores vary from the mean, in this case, the mean. Okay. And in fact, when we do have a normal distribution or a normal curve, the mean, median, and mode will be the same. Okay. To start looking at how the scores vary from the mean, and we're going to get to standard deviation, we're just going to kind of walk through this slowly. And uh, to begin, we're going to take a very simple example, and I think I'm using, I might even be using some of the exact numbers from uh, Dr. Susan Whiston's book on assessment and test and measurement, in case you want to use that as a reference. Uh, I'm not certain they're the exact numbers, but it's this is a pretty simple example to show. Okay, so um, to begin with, we've, we've got the score is indicated by X, and we're assuming that we've got a score of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and so these are actual scores. We've got a total of, essentially we'll say that five uh, people took uh, this assessment, and these were the scores they had, okay? And so what we do is we sum these up, and uh, sigma, the Greek, Greek symbol sigma, uh, stands for sum. So we're summing the scores, x equals scores. We sum that up and we get 15. Okay, so go ahead and count those up and you'll get 15. And then we want to determine the mean of these scores. Now mean uh, is also represented, you will also see mean represented as a line over x. Um, let's, let's just keep it as m for right now and uh, we'll follow this example. But uh, m equal mean, so we take the sum of the scores, 15, divided by the number of, the, the, the number of students who took the scores, which was 5. 1, one 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? Their scores totaled 15, but we had five students take it. So essentially, we've got, uh, it's a little hard to write here, 15 divided by 5, okay? So our mean is equal to 3, okay? Now, so that, that's useful information. We've got a mean of 3. That's our central point. Now what's helpful to know is the degree to which these scores deviated from the mean. And we can do that by running the deviation, and essentially all we're doing is taking the score minus the mean that we just calculated, which was 3. Okay. And so what we would say here is 1 minus the mean 
is minus 2. So that's helpful. We can say for this particular student, or, or per, particular student, they were two below the mean. Okay? Uh, this person had a score of two, so we say two minus the mean, three is minus one. Uh, so they're one below the mean. Here we had three, so we have zero. This person scored four, four minus the mean, we're one above the mean. This person was two above the mean. Okay? Now, this can be helpful when we're looking at individual scores to say that one person was one above the mean or what have you. But when we're wanting to look at a, a central number for a test uh, to determine what the variance or the deviation was for the test, the way this is calculated, when we sum this up, it's always going to equal zero because we are essentially taking the score from the mean that we calculated here and when we do this individually we will always we will always come up with zero when we're just taking the score from the mean um, so try it out try it out with a group of numbers and uh, and you'll see that that's always the case so then this is the reason why we come and we square our deviate we square our our, our, our the deviation in order to get rid of the negatives and so that we can um, actually get a number here that we can then begin to use to calculate um, and, and get, get a feel, kind of a centralized uh, idea of the uh, deviation units here. And so here what we do is we take a negative 2 and square it and we get 4, do away with the negative, cool, dealing with some numbers we can work with. Square the 1, we get 1, 0, and so then when we add this up, so we take the sum of the uh, scores minus the mean squared, okay, we just squared these, we get 10. And we will take that uh, to then uh, uh, determine the variance, which we'll show you in the next segment.